Hey y'all, today we have a Daiwa BG 4000. Uh, the backstory in this reel is that the customer dropped it in the water and then retrieved it and continued fishing with it. So this video is basically just breaking it down, uh, taking everything apart, making sure everything looks okay. We're not going to replace any parts and just putting it back together. But we are going to service it, uh, but it might be a little, a little bit raspy or something. But if the bearings are fine, we're going to leave them alone. Yeah, so I'm going to do the spool first. I'm doing that by undoing this drag knob. Just pull straight up. We can pop that out. And then to access the drags, we're going to remove a clip that's in here. I'm going to keep my finger over this. And just push down and up. looking for little slots in here. There's two slots that you can use to access the clip. There's one. And now we gotta get to the other one. Sometimes easier said than done. Let's pop this drag out and look at it and see how it looks. I did see some salt or some rust on this shaft here so Obviously it had some effect on it, and that would make sense. So I'm just cleaning out areas inside here right now, just looking for possible signs of salt. Don't see anything there. That clicker comes out, I'm sorry, it does not come out, so we're going to leave it alone and just add some grease to the back side right there and some grease on that line keeper as well as in that hole right there because there's a bearing that's going to sit inside there. Drags look okay. So I'm just going to clean them off and put them back in. I like cleaning there. I don't want to take all that grease off of it because I don't want to regrease it. I'm just dabbing it like that. And that should be good. That's the way it's going to set up. I'm going to have the first drag washer, metal keyed washer, drag washer, aired washer. The aired washer is going to go through, through those two slots that you see on the spool. Final drag washer and then the final metal keyed washer. Putting this back in, I'm going to kind of angle that one tip down inside the groove that's inside there and work my finger around to get the rest of it in. When I'm done with that, I'm going to make sure that that retaining spring is indeed inside the groove or channel that's inside there for it. And this is, so we're good on that end. Next we'll jump to the rotor. To access that, we're going to remove these this stack right here. And what we'll find is a couple of O-rings, hopefully. There's one, one O-ring, a washer, a couple of uh, spacer washers there, and you have a bearing. Now I'm going to undo that nut by first removing that lock nut right here, or the lock screw. And I believe this is counterclockwise, but we're going to find out. Yep, counterclockwise to remove it. Now you just pull that straight up. Just kind of rocked it back and forth as I pulled it up. Alright, so we're going to do the entire bale just to take a look at it. I'm going to unscrew this screw over here first. Keep that to that side. And then do this one over here. Well, first let me get the plate off, sorry. The plate on this does have to come off first because there's a little um, bar there that stops the screw from coming out. Take that off. I'll lift it up gently. <laughs> Scary stuff. The screw on this side, uh, I think they're both the same size, but I'm going to keep them separate for now just in case. 
I'm holding my finger down on this stuff so that nothing shoots up on me. And I'm going to release the pressure off of that because there was some. I will take the support also. I'll show you what it looks like and then I'm going to put it back in. Essentially what you have is a spring here with a hook on the end of it. The hook part is right there. That's going to fit over this. I'm not going to remove that. I don't know if it does come off or not. And essentially all it's going to do is that hook tent is going to hook tent is going to fit, uh, go over here and the straight edge is going to go inside that channel right there beneath that tab. So I'm going to kind of set this up and then it's going to work it into place. that over and I'm going to pull that spring down so that I can get it over the trip like so. I think we missed it so let's just go back there and just stick this hand back on over inside that tab. You have to keep it, uh, once you get it over you have to keep it set by pushing down on it so it stays inside that channel like that and that should be good we're going to verify that to put the screw back in it so let's make sure it's good and yeah we're good okay so let's do the line roller and yes, both screws were the same size. Kind of take this out so you guys can see it, but I did not, so apologies. Okay, so on the line roller, we have the bushing on this side, the line roller bushing here. And then a collar or a washer, it's a metal piece that goes in. For that bail spring, you have this piece that comes out, and you also have this arm that comes out of there. I'm just gonna stick it back in. On top of the arm, there is a, a support. Let me go ahead and get this cleaned up. I will add some grease and stuff to this. Sticking that collar back on, and I'm going to stick this line roller on. Now, this line roller is going to fit with that larger end facing out towards the bail arm. Before I do that, I am going to add a little bit of grease inside there. That's pretty much it. And hopefully, we can get that to stay. Stick this collar inside, or that bushing, excuse me. Let's clean this off a little bit and add some grease to it also. Stick this in like this. It's going to hold it right there. I'm going to clean off this screw because I see some definite salt on that. So if this were to sit around for six months to a year or something, you're going to end up with a frozen screw inside there and have a difficult time getting it out. All right, so let's set this up. Just kind of slapped it over there. There's no groove or channel for anything to sit in, so you don't have to line it up in any particular order or way. I'm 
All right, we get to about there where it's still a little bit loose and leave it like that. Now let's stick this bale spring back on. We're not gonna do anything to that. I'm only gonna add some grease to the top of it when I put it back in. This only goes in one way, which is always good. And it's gonna sit looking like this. Now again, there was some load on this when you stick this inside, so. I wanna get it through the hole. Essentially what I'm looking for right now is there's a hole on the bottom that I wanna get that shaft through to get this set. You'll see it sticking out there when I get it, if I get it. All right, there it is, just like that. And that's how it's gonna look. I'm gonna keep my finger over this just in case. Grease right there. And now I'm gonna take that hole right there and stick it over it. Kinda like this. All right, hold on, I like that. Like so. And now it's set and I'm going to screw that in. And it shouldn't fly up, but hey, who knows? So let's go ahead and cover it up as quickly as we can. Rotate this over. I'm going to add a little bit of grease around some points here. Stick some oil inside here where I see some uh, corrosion. And then secure this one. Alright, so while I'm here I'm going to add some grease around here inside the hole on the bottom of that gold piece and just somewhere around there all right so if this is not too tight yep good back the handle off by going counterclockwise all right now let's get to the top part we're gonna do those two screws there we have a couple things working inside here that we have to pay attention to straight up hello Yee. Oh. all right now we're just gonna pull this anti reverse straight up if we can get it up ah oh, we found some rust there you go that's not good hey I mean, that was the one part we would expect that there might be an issue, so. Anyhow, so now we can remove that bearing by undoing these two screws to remove the bearing cover. And we're gonna keep these screws separate because they're different sizes. Size, different size than that one, I mean. for them and let's just pull and hope we can't pull that's not good all right I'm gonna pause the camera and get this um, bearing pulled out of there <laughs> and then I'll come back to you guys I'm probably gonna need to open the side blade up to get it done but all right see you guys in a bit well let me just show you how to open the side blade up since I may get to that point anyhow. Uh, I am undoing a screw here for the bumper and there should be three screws or four screws, I don't remember. Let's get this one off first. Not even sure if we need to remove this or not. 
Good thing you do. And we only have three screws to worry about. I think all these screws, all three of these screws here are the same size. But we're going to check when I pull this up. Or pull them off. Bottom. Looks kind of long. Yeah, they're all the same size. Yes. And now we can just pull this up. And that came up nicely. And we can't pull the main gear out yet. We're going to have to remove uh, a clip on this side. And the way to do that is for me to use uh, a modified tool that I have. It's just a jig head that I opened up and kind of shaved down the the tip a little bit and it is hard to see that clip so I don't know how to show you this one on camera so I just won't I'm gonna take it out and then show you what it looks like all right so we got it off it just wraps around the gear and blocks it from coming out, so you have to remove it. And if I can get it up, it would be good. And there it is. So I have to put that back on when we put the gear back in, the main gear. Okay, so the pinion gear is out, and I needed to get that out for me to be able to get the main gear out. So now to get that main gear out, I'm going to pull out these two posts. And they are different sizes. I can rotate that one a little bit to get that to pop up in the air, like so. And now I have to kind of angle this, lift this up a little bit. Oh, forget that. We just took it out. And just push it out like that. Now, all we have left to do is undo that screw for the crosswind gear. And that is it, I believe. Nope, there's a bushing inside here. And I'm not gonna take out that, I'm sorry, there's a bearing inside here. I'm not gonna take out that, uh, that anti-reverse lever. All right, so I'm just gonna clean this stuff up, check this out and see how it looks, and work that bearing off of there. Make sure everything can be reused, uh, if possible. Uh, we're probably gonna reuse it anyhow, because I don't think he wants, he doesn't wanna replace any parts. But I did want to break it down for the video. So, all right, I'll see you guys in a bit after I clean all this stuff up. I'm just using uh, Q tips, paper towels, as you can see, and a toothbrush essentially. Uh, I will be using some Corrosion X on some of these areas because we have some rust after I clean it up. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so we have some definite wear in the anti reverse. Uh, and I've spoken to the owner of this, and I can clean it out. Don't replace it. So I had this guy from uh, Jamaica who had an issue with, I think it was Pen Battle or Pursuit or something, that his anti-reverse went bad. And I said he could try to clean it out. So we're going to do that with this one. And maybe if he's watching, he can see what I do for this and help it last a little bit longer. It's not going to last a whole lot longer, but it can probably last you until you get a replacement part in. Just clean off all the rust that's in there initially and I'm gonna spray it down with some Corrosion X and then continue wiping it. All right, so now I'm gonna spray this down with some Corrosion X and just kind of work that in. Now, even though I'm spraying this down, I wanna get a lot of that back off of the, the cylinders that, that are in there because I don't want this too lubricated. Kind of rotate that a little bit. And let's continue to wipe it down. As you can see, all I'm doing is just rolling it around with a Q-tip. The goal at this point is to try to uh, 
continue wiping, spraying and wiping until you have no brown at all or very little. It's almost impossible to get all of it out of there. So this is just like a band-aid. And while I do this, I'm gonna spray those uh, bearings down also with some Cruise Max instead of using the oil that I would typically use, which is Relax. I'm also gonna coat those gears with, uh, with some of this as well. Put them on here so you can see it. But I'm still gonna add grease to this. All I'm trying to do right here is add a layer of protection to the uh, to the gears. All right, I guess I'll pause it now and I'll just continue working on this, and then I'll come back to you and show you how how clean we've gotten it. Okay, so we got it to about that level. We're not gonna go anymore. I'm gonna add a little bit more, a little bit of oil in it now. Just a couple of drops on a few cylinders. Let me wipe inside of here out also to make sure. I'm going to stick this in. That uh, caved in end with the, uh, with the recess is going to be facing up. I'm going to stick that in. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to work this wide around a little bit. Because I don't want, I want to make sure I'm not feeling any kind of slipping on it. The only slip I'm going to feel is from that lever going back and forth that's all okay that's good leave that aside for a sec and let's do the crosswind the crosswind have a few pieces on it I had a bearing a couple of washers that will, that will go on top and this plate that goes on the bottom let me grease that up And again, I sprayed Corrosion X on this because I kind of wanted to have an added layer of protection for the uh, from the effects of the salt water. Putting a little bit of grease around that post. And I'm going to essentially coat this entire surface. But before I do that, we're going to stick on the stick back in the bearing that we took out, which was this one. I'm going to grease inside there where that brand is going to sit. Just drop it in like so. Grease around where that cross wind gear is going to go. Add a little bit of grease to the hole where the screw is going to go. Some grease inside that hole where that bearing sits, that bearing right there. Now we're going to put our plate on, right over there like that. Drop the crosswind gear on, stick our two washers on there, and then stick that bearing inside. Now we can just screw that in. Just snug, we don't need to go crazy on it. Wanna make sure it's spinning good. Sounds good. All right, so next we're going to stick that shaft back in there because we wanna work that uh, pinion gear back over it. Let's stick some grease right inside there and then we're gonna coat the entire area. So that channel I like to put a, a decent amount of grease because that's where the post off of that crosswind gear is going to ride. Some inside those channels where those uh, two posts are going to ride. Now we're going to take our shaft, kind of line that up like so. Take our post, put that through, and it, it does get a little bit tricky here, so don't don't get a 
don't get down on yourself if you have a little bit of a struggle there. I don't know if I should put that in yet because I want to get this main gear in. Alright, good, we can get that in. I'm going to rest that main gear just like that. And now I'm going to stick this post through. You'll notice there's a little notched end on this larger post. That's going to go facing up towards that direction. We have to get it through the hole on the crosswind block. I think we found it. I think we found it. Yeah, we did. But it's going to move around on me. Stop moving. And I'm going to push that until it gets all the way up into the channel it needs to sit in. And it'll be flush when you do. Now this might move around on you, so you have to be a little bit careful. Now I'm going to take my bearing that's going to go inside that hole right there. Drop that in. Lift this main gear up a little bit. And then just push that bearing down. If I can see it. You want to make sure it's inside that hole. And we just had it fall inside, so that's good. Now we can take our pinion gear, stick our washer on there, and kind of do the same process. At this point, what I'm doing is I'm holding onto the block so nothing really moves out of place. Make sure the bearing goes, uh, make sure the pinion gear goes inside the bearing, which it has. And now that's pretty much secure. And we should be good with that. At this point, I could lock this up, which is probably what I'm going to do. And then we'll work on that little clip on the end afterwards. Because that one gets a little bit tricky. All right, so let me stick on my washer that this came with. Stick on the bearing. I'm going to grease inside this hole where that bearing is going to sit. Now I can just cover this up. Let me just make sure everything is set. Now we can just screw these in. And since I didn't grease the holes, let me go ahead and grease these screws. So they don't get frozen in there. Don't worry about that post coming out. As long as it doesn't come all the way out, it'll be fine. Just gotta stick it back up in there. Just like that. Now I'm definitely gonna cover this up so that post doesn't keep slipping out on me. There's a little channel on here that this uh, raised edge fits on. I'm gonna slide that on first and then just kind of work uh, the other part on. And we missed it. Yeah, I think we missed it. Oh, there we go. Just gotta play with it a little bit, make sure you get it set though. Same kind of thing for this one. I didn't add any grease to the hole. So I'm gonna add some grease to the screw. looks good so far make sure that really is in place yeah okay so now next step we can take is stick the bearing inside I've already greased inside that hole or no oh, I did not oh yeah yeah that's not good I do want to grease inside that hole right there because I don't want that bearing getting stuck and I do want to also grease those holes right there where those screws are gonna go and a little bit on top of that 
Ah, uh, Kim for the lever. Oh, with the bearing. I had to pull that pinion out so I could pop the bearing on there because it was tight going down. Um, but you do want to make sure, like it was before, that the bottom of that pinion is fitting through the bearing that's beneath it. And you also want to make sure that bearing right there is flush so you can get the rest of the pieces on there. And this one is. So now we're going to apply the, the bearing cover. Just drop it over like that. And we're going to stick these screws in. Sometimes when you put these screws in, they like to go in one slot versus the other. Somehow when you thread them in there some uh, from the manufacturer, they just go better in one hole over another. So that's all I was doing there. I just want to make sure that I didn't want to re-groove inside the inside threads there. So I just swapped the screws from one side to the other. That's all. They're both the same size. Just one of those things. Now we can stick on the AR clutch. Stick this on first. It's kind of key, so you gotta rotate it until it falls on. And I'm gonna make sure it looks good. And I don't know if it does. Yeah, it looks good. Now we're gonna take this clutch, drop it over that. You wanna line that little notch up right, that little notch there, up with the tip of that cam for the anti reverse clutch. I'm not even showing you guys just like so so now it's over it so whenever we move that it will also affect okay so now we're gonna put the cap on I'm gonna grease those holes I think that's good and this cap only goes on one way if you put this on wrong, it's going to feel, it's going to have like a little rock to it. Uh, I think there's an arrow or, or something on here that tells you which direction it goes in. I don't see it. So, we're going to try it on. And if it sits properly, then it's right. It is right. Well, this one actually does, either way it's fine. Uh, I think it's just, I guess it depends on the size of the uh, of the reel. I think I had a 5,000 or something that didn't um, sit properly in one direction versus, versus another. I'm just securing that with the screw. That feels good. All right, so now we're going to get that clip back on that we took off earlier. Now I'm gonna move this bearing down because it needs to sit over the, uh, the main gear. So I'm gonna play with the backside a little bit just to make sure I can get that down the right way. And I'm not pushing inside the bearing I'm pushing on top of it. There we go. I think we just got set. Now essentially you're going to want to get this clip all the way down around the post. There's a little uh, shoulder right here you want to get it under. Should have showed you that when I had the gear out, and I apologize for not doing that. But when you're looking at your reel, you'll see it. So I'm just gonna drop it on and pray for the best. This is one of those things you gotta kind of play with to get it in. It's not as hard as it seems, but it is one of those things that you want to make sure you get correct. I think I need my 
my glasses for this one. I think we got it on the first try. That's amazing. Yeah, it looks like we're set on there. So that's good stuff. Yeah, we are set. Perfect. Now we can put the cap back on. Just the O-ring over. Came out, but it just kind of sits around that edge. As we screw it down, it, sh it should ride down, but I don't want to pinch it, so I'm going to push it down slightly. Kind of recess it a little bit. That should be good. And let's screw that on. Alright, now let's do the handle. Not a whole lot to do here. I don't think this has bearing inside, so I'm just going to oil there. Kind of spin out as I work it. That should trickle down inside that shaft. That's good. I'm going to grease around here. Definitely those threads where it's going to go over that main gear. And I'm not going to screw it on yet, but I'm going to put the rotor on. That's going to sit just like this. And now we can screw that back in. There's a little dimple in the bottom here. That dimple's facing down. And I'm going to snug it down, but I'm not going to over tighten this. I'm going to go to about. That feels pretty good. Yeah, that feels good. Let's see. Yeah, we can definitely hear the raspiness from that. Uh, from that uh, anti reverse clutch. But for now, it works. Put in the lock screw. Ugh. Now let me just put this on and feel how it feels. Oh yeah, it feels okay. I felt a little bit of a roughness somewhere in there, but no, I missed it. Alright, good. Now we can get our click ratchet back on. Let's clean that off a little bit. That just drops on straight like that. Get our two washers. I'm going to put the red one on the bottom. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. Now we're going to take our metal washer. Stick that over it. Take this bearing and clean it a little bit first. Spray that down with some corrosion X as well. Do a quick spin on this before I put it on. Drop it on the shaft, and now we stick that O ring that we had from before. Just gonna roll that down like so. I'm going to add some of that corrosion next to my fingers on there. Now let's stick the, the spool on and we'll test this wheel out make sure it works. We missed something somewhere because we don't have our clicker. Oh, there we go. It wasn't set properly, that's all. 
All right, so let's test this reload, make sure it works. We are gonna hear some noise on it, we know that already. Test this drag. Nah, that feels fine. The anti-reverse still works. Does this have a bail flip? Yep. All right, that's it. All right, guys, if you found the video useful, please uh, hit that thumbs up button. Let people know you like the video. Uh, consider subscribing if you like seeing this kind of videos. And be sure to tell your friends about the channel as well. And I think that's it. So I'll see you guys next time.